Classified and variable. Switch assigned to part of control frequency. You're cleared for takeoff. We get a departure, blow down 204 airports, clocking 3 4000. Roger 204, come starboard 2240. Roger, coming starboard 240. Operation 6 on 6 demonstrated the effectiveness of the Hughes Phoenix missile system by attacking six different targets at one time. Three air launch drones represented enemy fighter aircraft at supersonic speed. Three obsolete training aircraft represented larger enemy bombers. And one Mach 2 land based drone represented a launched missile. They were sacrificed in the cause of presenting the Tomcat with an array of targets. With a Navy crew at the controls, each of the six targets were individually identified on the radar scope and allocated a Phoenix. Mark one, one's away. One time, all six missiles were in the air, streaking towards their individual targets. Only four of the six targets were destroyed, but this was due entirely to a malfunction in the two drones. The information collected proved conclusively that even under 6 to 1 odds, the Phoenix Tomcat combination had a success rate of 80% or better. The first two carrier based Tomcat squadrons were the VF 1 Wolfpack and the VF 2 Bounty Hunters. With their induction, the Navy now had in one plane an answer to the missile threat and an advanced dogfight. Every landing is a new experience, even for veteran pilots. 
placing 80,000 pounds and $40 million worth of high technology onto a few hundred square feet of deck takes its toll on men and machinery alike. Undercarriages and airframes have to come to terms with phenomenal stress, and sometimes not always with the desired result. Here, a Tomcat hits the deck of the Forrestal, and the landing gear gives way. Still containing fuel and probably armament, the aircraft effectively blocks the landing approach to all other aircraft and must quickly be removed. A gantry hoists the crippled plane up for removal. Firefighters and medical teams stand by as the entire complement is well aware of the devastation an exploding aircraft could create. Finally, the plane is secured, a source of jubilation to at least one member of the deck crew. The Tomcat's major role should never be considered as an aircraft alone. It is a combination of airframe, avionics, and missile ray. The components come together to form a lethal package, a complete weapon system. The F-14 carries the Phoenix missile as one of uh, three missiles that it can carry. It carries the, uh, the Phoenix, the uh, Sparrow missile, the Sidewinder missile, and then it has a, an internal gun as a Gatling, Gatling gun cannon that the F-14 carries. So it has a very wide range of missiles. The Phoenix is the, is the weapon system, is the missile that really gives the F-14 what's called a fleet defense capability, where it can, can really augment the, uh, the capability of the carrier to defend itself. Miramar Naval Air Station is Fighter Town, home of the famous Top Gun Fighter Pilot School. Here, crews are given the opportunity to pace their F-14s against aircraft from aggressor squadrons. These aggressor aircraft are specially modified to resemble the flying characteristics of potential Soviet adversaries. Here, a crew flying a modified A-4 Mongoose pits its skills against the crew of an F-14 Tomcat. Although only an exercise, the doctrine of these engagements is train like you fight, fight like you train. But the Tomcat's also made to win when the game is real, as it was over the Gulf of Sydney in August of 1981. With the carrier task force testing Gaddafi's line of death in the Mediterranean, tensions were high. On August 19th, the patrolling Hawkeye detected two fighters traveling at high speed towards the carrier John F. Kennedy. Two patrolling Tomcats were sent to intercept. At the controls of one was Commander Larry Muzinski. First thing on the second morning of this exercise we were doing, they came out and approached us head on. We had them in radar contact the whole way. And uh, as they were approaching, we didn't suspect any particular problems. But then as they were approaching us about a mile away, their lead aircraft fired uh, what we believed to be an atoll heat-seeking missile head on at us. And we just evaded that missile very quickly and turned around and went on the attack. Uh, which our rules of engagement at that time, President Reagan had just changed the rules of engagement and said if you're ever fired at, uh, you can return fire and protect yourself and we'll talk about it later, which is exactly what we did. We passed them head on at about 600 miles an hour, uh, did our 7G reversal turn and got behind them and my commanding officer who was flying the other aircraft shot one down and I shot the leader down and the whole thing from the time they shot to the time we had both of them down was 44 seconds long. There was no reason to suspect that anything like that was going to happen that morning, but it did. And therefore, you do revert into this reactionary mode and you start thinking, okay, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, the next step, the next step, the next step, and you do it. And we did everything we had trained to do. The results were exactly what they were supposed to be. You didn't have time to get nervous because things were happening so fast when it was over with done with, we joined back up together and we're heading back for the ship, then the adrenaline high started wearing off and literally got so uncontrollable, the shakes, everything like that, just had to reach down, click on the autopilot and let the autopilot fly the airplane back up to the ship for about uh, 15 minutes while we just all calmed down. 